Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The birth of Jesus is a story that is familiar to many of us. Of all the stories you have heard from the scriptures, you most likely know this one the best. I'm sure many of you could say most of it from memory, whether you realize it or not. I'm sure for many years of Christmas programs or classic movies that have Christmas pageants in them, or just hearing it read over and over again from the Scriptures, this story has been ingrained into your minds. Familiarity can be a blessing. You know, I love listening to my kids reciting this story because they've heard it so many times, knowing that they will have this story with them wherever they go and whatever situation they find themselves in. But if we're not careful, familiarity can also keep the story at a distance. Our mind is too busy replaying what we think we know rather than listening to what God is revealing to us as we hear the story in that moment, as its familiar cadence passes by our ears. And so this evening, I want to begin by engaging not your ears, but your eyes with a different interpretation of the nativity story. And that is the insert included with your bulletin this evening. The artist is Everett Patterson, and he entitled his work, Jose y Maria. Now, when you first glance at the image, it appears to be a young couple stranded outside of a convenience store in the rain. But with every detail that your eye catches, you begin to see the story of Jesus' birth imagined as if it happened in modern time. And just when I thought I found all of the references that Patterson has hidden in this image, I keep finding more. And while I'm sure most of us don't imagine the nativity story in this way, I love how this depiction breaks through the fog of familiarity and brings this story into our world in a new way. Because there's something powerful about a story coming to life in your world, especially when it's a story of hope and a story that brings you life. Now, we're here tonight to celebrate the story of Emmanuel, the story of God with us, the birth of a king promised from God spanning thousands of years, now finally coming true. Now, Luke doesn't bring us into a faraway land of fantasy. No, he brings us into real-life Bethlehem during the real reign of Caesar Augustus and a governor named Quirinius. In those days, people were ordered to leave their homes, to return to their place of birth in order to be counted in a census to appease some emperor in some faraway land on the other side of the world. And for Joseph, Joseph and Mary, this was an inconvenience, to say the least. The last thing they needed as they were going through all of these things in their life. It was bad enough that they had already had to deal with explaining their circumstances to their neighbors in Nazareth. But now they'd have to deal with a whole new set of eyes and opinions in Bethlehem, having to answer the same questions over and over again. No, we're not married yet. Yes, we're pregnant. No, we're not having issues. No, we're not getting a divorce. No, we aren't crazy. She's pregnant with the Son of God. On top of all that, Mary and Joseph had been stripped of all their plans, all of their intentions, all that they had dreamed about in the future that they had envisioned all of that now is but a distant memory. And so as they make their journey to Bethlehem, all they could do was believe what had been told them by the Lord, that this child is from the Holy Spirit and will save his people from their sins, that they will call his name Jesus and of his kingdom there will be no end. When the timing would not be ideal for them, the baby would not wait for them to return to Nazareth to be born. The baby would not wait for them to find a private room in the proper care of a midwife. No, the baby was born when the only place to lay him in was a feeding trough. 
And even when the baby finally was here, wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger, Mary and Joseph still had no proof, no confirmation. Mary had nothing she could point to and say, see, I was telling the truth. Joseph had no evidence he could hold on to to silence all of the doubts and questions that must have been circling around his mind. There were no visits from angels to comfort them in that moment, to assure them that everything was on track and exactly as it was supposed to be. All Mary and Joseph can do is believe in the word that had been spoken to them before they left Nazareth. That is, until the shepherds show up. Instead of angels, the Lord sends Mary and Joseph shepherds who had been out in the fields all night Strangers who had smelled like sheep. The last people Mary and Joseph would ever expect to show up. And it's from the mouths of these out-of-breath herdsmen that Mary and Joseph hear the good news about their baby. And you can imagine how these shepherds tried to make sense of everything that they had seen that night, trying to communicate it to Mary and Joseph. Yeah, we were, we were out in the fields minding our own business when the craziest thing happened. A burst of light nearly blinded us, and a creature unlike anything we'd ever seen in the wilderness began speaking to us, telling us to fear not and bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You will find him wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger." And that's when the heavens broke into song, voices everywhere singing glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. See, something incredible happened when the story of Christ's birth came to life in the shepherd's world. I mean, had shepherds ever left anyone in awe before? Had shepherds ever moved anyone with words as they did that night? Now, the birth of this baby changed everything. It brought people together who would never have been in the same room had the divine not collided with our ordinary world. Now, Luke then tells us the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for everything they had seen and heard. Their lives forever changed. And the last image we are left with is Mary. Mary treasuring up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Every strange moment, every awkward situation, every unexpected turn, Mary treasured all of it. Every year we seem to find ourselves in pursuit of the perfect Christmas. We search for the perfect gift. We try to cook the perfect dinner. We look forward to the perfect family gathering. We have a picture in our mind of what we want Christmas to be, and that picture is perfect. And every year, we are reminded of just how frustrating that pursuit can be. We encounter the harshness of our broken world and the limits of our sinful flesh. There are arguments that never seem to go away, a divorce or a death that changes who gathers in the room with us, or simply all of the emotions that keep you from even wanting to be in that room. But when we sit there with the pieces of our perfect Christmas shattered in our hands, we begin to see the true message of Christmas, that God has looked upon us He has seen our sin. He has seen our suffering. He has seen us holding those broken pieces, pondering what to do with them. And He has chosen to have compassion on us. He has made a choice to be with us, to love us regardless of our circumstances. He has chose to become one of us, to live among us, to offer His life for us for the forgiveness of our sin. There's something powerful about a story coming to life in your world, especially when it's a story of hope, a story that brings you life. 
And my hope for you tonight is that you hear again what Christ has done for you. For unto you this day, a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. He is God with us in our flesh, in our mess, in our homes, in every part of our lives. He is wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, king of kings, who takes all things on his shoulders. He is born. His name is Jesus. It's a name that gives new life, a name that gives new hope, a name that brings together a new family and a new community, a name that sends you in new directions with new purpose. He is infinitely wonderful and loves you more than you could ever imagine. He desires to take your guilt, your shame, everything that has shattered your life, His joy enters into any circumstance in life and brings incredible comfort, a joy that is rich and abundant, and tonight that joy is here for you. One of my favorite Luther quotes comes from a sermon he preached at Christmas time to his congregation in Wittenberg people who were trying to imagine the birth of Christ unfolding in their world and how they would have responded. So Luther says, There are many of you in this congregation who think to yourselves, if only I had been there, how quickly I would have been to help the baby. Yes, you would. You say that now because you know how great Christ is. But if you had been there at that time, you would have done no better than the people of Bethlehem. Why do you not do it now? You have Christ in your neighbor. To say that Luther had a way with words is an understatement. And while these words intended to humble his parishioners of old... I hope they inspire you to see even more how the story of God entering this world is still unfolding today. This story is all around you because He is God with you now. He is God with your neighbor, God in your community, often in the humblest of ways that can easily be missed, but still bringing light to every darkness and hope to every despair. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.